that's the beauty of these, these events, is to share the good news of what's going on in our community. Now, we've got some great news with our next speaker from the lovely folks at TxDOT. Mr. Henry, is it Kuroga? Kuroga. All right? So if you give him a hand as he comes up, he's in talk. Good morning, folks. Thank you for having me. Um, my name is Henry Kiroga. I'm the assistant air engineer for uh, the Textot office, which is right here in Humble. So uh, we're right here in our backyard, uh, in your backyard. Um, our area office of responsibility, the highways, just very briefly, we handle in the north-south direction, uh, State Highway 249 from 610 to the county line. I-45 from 610 to the Montgomery County Line, and FM 2100. All of FM 2100 is in our area. That's in the north-south direction. In the east-west direction, we handle 249 from Waller County to, to the east. FM 1960 from Waller County to Liberty County, and FM 2920 from Waller County to I-45. Okay, so that's, that's our area of responsibility. We're here in your backyard. If, if anybody if ever needs any questions uh, for those highways, feel free to call us. Uh, today, again, since this is an our area of responsibility, I'm here to talk about some improvements that are planned for the intersection of Westlake, Houston, and FM 1960. Uh, <coughs> there, there wasn't a really good way to present this. Uh, I have plan sheets, which I don't think people are apt at reading plan sheets. So I have this picture. So let me, I'll, I'll help you, I'll help walk you through this. Uh, very briefly, this intersection is, is a configured a very, in a very strange uh, way. It, uh, it's experiencing uh, accidents and, and, and crashes. I don't have that data with me, but to get this project funded, uh, it competed against other projects uh, due to improving of safety measures. Okay, TechStock gets his money from different funds. Uh, one source of funds is the FHWA, which requires, say, we improve the capacity of the roadway, and we add shoulders and what have you. Uh, some projects are funded if uh, they are deemed to improve on a safety measure. So this intersection actually competed against other intersections in our entire district, and it got nominated uh, due to the safety uh, crashes in the safety day. Um, once again, try to bear with me here. Let's picture this intersection without the color, okay? Without the color is the existing condition, okay? So right, right now, going up is north, westbound, traffic is coming this way. And in the westbound direction, to turn left, go south, there's only one left turn lane right here. This traffic takes a left this way. In the eastbound direction, we have two lanes that make a left turn from going east, left to north. That's the existing condition. Another interesting, interesting thing about this intersection is the, the uh, signals are in like a, kind of like a Z configuration. If you can see the shadows right there. This is the, the signals here, then it crosses this way, and then it comes this way. Very, very strange, unconventional configuration for signals. One of the reasons for that is this big area here, okay? Once again, ignore the color, and depending on where you, where you measure from, either the center of this lane, the edge of this lane, or this one, from here to this left turn lane is almost 100 feet, okay? So we, are, we have dubbed this no man's land, okay? And I, just yesterday, I saw it happen where people were coming from here, and they noticed that the light turned red. Well, when you're here, the signal is above you. You don't know if it's red or green. He got caught here, stopped, which was not a problem, when on red. When the light turned green for these folks to go this way, right here, this traffic kept going, and this person didn't know, is it green or red? So they're stopped, and so now people are honking, and so that happens a lot. So, so one source of the problem. How do we propose to try and improve that? Now, come in with the color, okay? The color shows you what we're proposing, which is gonna move, gonna do a couple things. Number one, we're gonna move 
this left turn movement here, this way, to where two lanes will now be turning from this direction onto here, okay? Does everybody follow that? Okay. On this side, we're turning, taking the left turn movement from here, bringing it to this here. These folks are now gonna turn this way. So now these folks don't even see each other, okay? Whereas right now, although we do it independently, what tends to happen is another thing that, that's happening is these folks turn, and if they took it on a yellow, it's probably gonna be right here, and this traffic has the potential to start going. That's another problem. The other thing we're gonna improve on is we're gonna provide two left turn lanes in both directions, okay? So that should save a little bit of light time because right now, the way it's configured, this left turn goes first along with the through traffic, everybody else is stopped. Then this traffic goes through, and the last to go is this left turn movement. Now, we're gonna allow two movements to go simultaneously, thereby giving the through traffic a little bit, you know, a whopping seven to eight seconds is an eternity. <laughs> <laughs> it's an eternity when you talk about traffic. Okay? So that's that improvement. Uh, this project is going to be led this month, August 7th or 8th, I don't remember the date. And uh, it's estimated to come in, uh, the engineer's estimate is estimated at 715,000. So seven to 900,000 will probably be accepted. Uh, did everybody follow that? Any, any questions? Yes. Completion date. I'm sorry? Estimated completion date. When a project lets, sir, it takes about 45 days for all the paperwork, the bonding, the checks to be there. So 45 days, that puts us, say, middle of October. So we could expect construction hopefully sometime in November. And estimated completion is uh, four months. Any other questions? Yes, sir. So the, uh, if I'm looking at this right, uh, we're not adding lanes, we're just moving the turn lanes. We're shifting the, the turning movement, and we are adding this one extra left turn down gotcha. here, because this has only one. Perfect. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Wasn't there a talk about an overpass at one time? And, and that's not something we're talking about. <laughs> uh, we had several public meetings about the widening of 1960. And that did include an overpass here with Lake Houston. The public was against that. And so we, we kind of were, we had to consider the two options, with a bridge and without a bridge. And it's my understanding that the community is now seeing the benefits of the bridge, but the funding is not there anymore. So the funding for, to widen FM 1960 is not there. I've gotten with Mr. Drumblow, who will be the proponent to push this. It has been dropped from the HGAC. I don't know if anybody knows what the HGAC is. That's the body in conjunction with upper management in Texas who determines which projects get built and which don't. Due to partially the opposition and then the, the, the money drying up, the, the, the project has been dropped. But Mr. Drumblow and the Chamber of Commerce and uh, Mr. Huberty's office are aware, and they will be the proponents to push for the widening, which is much needed. I, I understand that, we know that. But at our office level, there's, there's nothing we can do. It's, it's upper management, HGAC, people like Charlie Drumble with the chamber, and Mr. Huberty's office. So it could be both. Uh, so we could have this now, and the other possibly, or? Yes, no, this is going for sure. That's, that's this is going for sure. The only other question is, Will we be able to sell the public on the, on the bridge option when the money becomes available? Yes, sir. In the original, as far as the widening of 1960, am I correct to understand it was supposed to start back where we were six lanes, just the other side of the first street, all the way to the, to, to the lake lane. bridge? Yes, sir. Okay, because if, if you think about it, that section is the only one that's five lanes to stay. Everything else on either side has been uh, uh, white to the seven lanes. Anybody else? What's, what's the plan for dealing with traffic during construction? Right here. We have typical uh, traffic control plans that, that we have to, to manage the traffic. We have restrictions, 9 to 3 in the lane closures. We have lane assessment fees if the contractor has a lane closed beyond a certain time. Uh, if we have a major 
construction plan planned. We typically do that on the weekend, although uh, weekends don't matter here. <laughs> <laughs> weekends don't matter here, so just keep your eyes out, ears open, and take an alternate route during the construction. It's only four months, so please bear with us. Yes, ma'am. Um, you were talking about the Z shape of the current traffic signals. Yes. What will the new ones look like? Will it, will it be like turn lanes? It will be more conventional because now we're just going to spray the wire from here, right here, that will be for these folks, and then across here, you know, across here will be for these folks. So it's just this, basically this way, this way. More poles, less wires. Uh, yeah. Okay. yeah, more conventional square, if you will. Yeah. Yes, good question. One more question, anybody? Wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank you for